This right here is the Gebi 20 bar espresso machine. And this is one of the DeLonghi Dedica's main competitors here in the USA. And so I thought it's worth a look. And so today we're just gonna take a look at the machine and we're gonna have a look at the build quality, the features that it offers. We're going to use it and see how the ergonomics are. And then finally, we're gonna see how the results are. How is the result in the cup? Let's just get started right away. This Gebi 20 bar espresso machine is made completely out of plastic. You can hear on all sides. And the top, it's all plastic. Of course, the water tank is plastic too, but it's a pretty good size. You can see there, it kind of borrows its design from like the Breville group, where you have it slide in with these slots here, and you got this folding handle design there. So that's kind of cool. Everything else is plastic, except for the drip tray. Now the drip tray is gonna be stainless steel, and I do like the drip tray because it fits nicely. You're also going to notice that it's got here a float, so the float will go up, letting you know that this needs to be emptied. And what's really interesting about that is that this machine right here offers a feature that the Dedica doesn't. And that is, you'll see some water exiting out of here. After you steam with this machine, it cools down the boiler automatically. That is a really neat feature. Let's put this back in here. Now let's have a look at the port filter. All right, so the port filter is an aluminum design. It's got a plastic handle here with one of these little flippy things that you're supposed to use to bang out the puck. I really don't like these flippy things at all, but it's, that's what it is. And it's got a plastic insert here. This is the double basket right here. And you're going to notice there's a tiny pinhole here uh, in the middle. So on the basket, you've got a bunch of holes right in there. And on the other side is a pinhole and that's what you call a pressurized basket. This creates the pressure artificially. There's also a single basket, as you can see here. So you can choose between the double and the single. Now these baskets also have a notch in them. So with this notch, you can just line it up here to the porta filter so that it kind of locks in. There's the notch there, and all you have to do is line that up, twist it, and then it's, it's held in there fairly well. That's the porta filter there. It is what it is, aluminum and plastic together with a pressurized basket. Important to mention is that this is a 51 millimeter brew group, just as DeLonghi uses 51 millimeters. However, it's not completely compatible, so you can't use the same aftermarket parts. Now on the side here, you've got a switch. So in the middle, the machine doesn't do anything at all. And in this position, you're in coffee mode. In the other position, you go to steam mode. Let's turn the machine on and see how long it requires to heat up. So what I do kind of like about this machine, if you can tell on the video, is that these lights, they seem to breathe. So that's, that's pretty cool. They don't flash. They softly illuminate and then they go back. It's pretty neat. And in coffee mode or in standby mode, they're blue, and when you go to steam mode, they turn white. So that's kind of an interesting design feature. And talking about design, I do think that this looks pretty handsome, actually, on your kitchen countertop with the white design. I mean, it is plastic, but it's pretty handsome as far as aesthetics go, especially for that price range. So we're still heating up. I guess what we might as well do in the meantime is load up our porta filter. Now this machine also comes with this little scoop and tamper combination and I found you can fit right around 14 grams. Okay, now it's heated up. So I got a little scale here and I'm going to just measure out and see how much of this coffee powder that I can fit in there. This is pre-ground coffee and that's what this machine is made for is using pre-ground coffee in one of these pressurized baskets. So I'm gonna put a scoop in there. That's about seven grams. Tamp that down just a little bit and I think I can probably fit just about two scoops in there. Okay, so yeah, that's 14 grams that I'm able to fit in the double basket. And now I'm gonna go ahead and just tamp it with the included tamper. And that is the puck right there. Doesn't look too bad. Let's put that in the machine. And let's see what our shot looks like. So, here we go. Now you'll notice we got manual, one shot, and two shot. So the one shot and two shot can be programmed volumetrically to be 
you know, whatever you want. But I like to use the manual so that I can use a scale and measure myself. Oh, that's right. I'm not in coffee mode yet. That is a little bit confusing about this machine. So coffee mode. And now, now we can pull a shot. Does have a pre-infusion as you see there. And I'm gonna stop it right around at 30 grams. So we're at 20 already. And whoop, there's 30 already. It's going to keep dripping a little bit and now we got 40 grams. And that took right around 15 seconds or so. And there you go, it's got some crema on there. You can see that um, the pressurized basket is doing its job. It's going to get you some crema out of just about any kind of coffee. And the flavor is pretty much what I would expect from a pressurized extraction and from some decent espresso. For what it is, it's a pretty decent shot. But you can't expect to get the same results from a pressurized extraction as you will from a conventional non-pressurized. This is what it's like to knock out the puck. There we go, now it's out. Getting value from this video? Please take a moment to like and subscribe. Let's go ahead and try the milk steaming capabilities of this machine. And I would say that is one of the strong suits of this machine. It has got a lot of power. Now when steaming milk, cow's milk is the easiest. The fatter the better and the colder the better. That will give you more time to texture the milk. So I'm going to fill this pitcher about halfway and let's get started. And here's one more tip for you to make steaming milk easier, silkier, and to have less cleanup, just remove the Panarello. You don't need that. So you wanna just start at the surface there and inject some air right in the beginning. And immediately you also want to form like a whirlpool. You can see it's turning and churning like that. That's what you want. And you also want to inject air while the milk is still somewhat cold, like right around up to room temperature. And at that point, you can dip the tip a little bit further in and now just steam until it gets nice and toasty. You can see here that it's got really excellent power there. Really, really good. It's already getting quite hot. So I'm going to turn that off. And wipe off the steam one right away. You got to do that. Now let's go ahead and pour ourselves a cappuccino. All right, so as you noticed, this machine has really nice steam power. I was able to make myself a really nice uh, silky milk, delightful. And it's got the automatic boiler cooldown feature, which I think is super convenient. I like that a lot. And how's the taste? It's a good cappuccino because the milk is frothed to be nice and silky, nice and hot, mixed together with the espresso. That makes a nice cappuccino. Let's do one more thing and try this with a non-pressurized conventional basket. So I made this one myself. Uh, I have not found an aftermarket bottomless porta filter for this machine, which is too bad. But I'm just gonna load this up and let's see what it looks like. All right, so now I'm gonna try to put in about 15 grams of freshly ground espresso here. And I'm going to use my WDT tool to just kind of mix it up like that. Distribute the grounds a little bit better. Any clumps, get rid of those. Yeah, just do that. Give it a couple taps. I got my 51 millimeter tamper right here. So I'm gonna just go ahead and tap that. Excellent. So let's see what our shot looks like here in a conventional uh, espresso extraction.
Now that extraction was a bit too fast. That only lasted about 18 seconds or so. For a non-pressurized extraction, you're really kind of aiming for 25 or 30 seconds. And I had that grind set the same as on my DeLonghi Dedica, which does take 25 to 30 seconds. And that brings me to the point, the name of this machine is 20 bar. And I thought, that can't be. There's no way that this machine is providing 20 bar. The closest or the highest that I've measured any machine so far is 13 bar, but I measured this one and you wouldn't believe it. It went up all the way past the maximum on my meter. And so I'm guessing actually it does reach like 17 or 18 bar. And that's, it's more than you actually want for a conventional espresso extraction. For a pressurized one like this here, that's fine because you wanna be able to push the grounds through regardless of the ground size. But for a traditional espresso, you don't want 17 bar, you don't want 20 bar, you want more like eight or nine bar. But anyway, that right there is the conventional espresso. It's okay, it needs to take a little bit longer. Um, so I think I would have to grind finer in, in this case. It's a little hot and a little bitter. And what I've noticed with this machine is that if you do do a conventional extraction, it forms a crater in the puck. So you can see right there, that's what the puck looks like after the extraction and there's a big crater uh, right there. So with this crater being formed in the puck, I'm thinking that the distribution is not great from the shower screen and is coming down more or less just in one spot, which again is okay for pressurized espresso because you're kind of just forming a soup inside the basket. But for a non-pressurized, you want the extraction to be even across the entire puck. That is kind of the whole thing behind the puck preparation and installing a good shower screen and making sure that the water distribution is even. All right, there we are. That's a 20 bar espresso machine from Gevi. So let's just draw a conclusion. Who is this machine for? I think it's fine for somebody who's just getting into espresso and milk frothing does a great job at the latter. And for the former, if you don't wanna buy a grinder yet and spend all that money, you can just get this pre-ground espresso like this and use this machine and really kind of just get started into the hobby and see if you like it. So for that person, it's great. For a person that wants to get more into the conventional espresso side of things, do the puck prep, uh, do a proper grind and get fresh beans, then you might wanna pass this machine up. And as far as the longevity of the machine is concerned, I really can't say anything to that because I've not had it that long. It is mostly made of plastic, but the design itself, the ergonomics, it's pretty good. All right, guys, I hope that this video is helpful for you. And if so, give it a like, check out my other videos. If you like what you see, subscribe to the channel, it's totally free. And until next time, I say happy coffee drinking and happy espresso drinking. Bye now.